Ah. <clears throat> hey, Eddie. Hey, Patrick. How you doing? Very good. So I got you on speakerphone. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you just a couple of kind of easy questions, since you sure, guys. Have... I'm good at easy. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> now you got a 1965 Mustang. And, yes, sir. and you guys are the owners of Inspire EV. And you guys are doing EV conversions there. Now, yes, sir. the Mustang was your, your, was your first kind of rodeo. No pun intended there. Got <laughs> you. What was the first thing you guys tried to do with that car? Well, I mean, of course, the, this Mustang was our proof of concept. And, and uh, we wanted to... We wanted to prove that uh, you could put a uh, electric motor in the front of the car, replace the ICE engine, and uh, attach it to a drive shaft. And when we first started down that road, we we uh, didn't know you, and we had heard inklings out there that uh, somebody was was transforming a Tesla motor to to mount under the hood. Um, but we set out to uh, do it ourselves. Um, we didn't want to put the Tesla motor in the rear because, of course, a 65 Mustang is a pretty narrow vehicle. And so we set down the path of uh, trying to figure out how to reconfigure a Tesla motor to, to attach to a drive shaft. Um, we spent a lot of time and quite a bit of money um, trying to sort through that and um, then we met you and uh, and realized that um, you had already done all of the R&D and figured out how to make it work and um, made it look really good as well. Here's a common, common question that has been popping up on the internet. And uh, I've been getting this for a while. And the reason your, your name came up today is because we were talking about it is the common question we get on the internet is, or I wouldn't say question, the common complaint we get is, oh my God, it's so expensive. I could just go down to the junkyard and pick up a Tesla motor for, you know, 6,000 bucks and do it myself. And my answer to them is awesome. I'm go for it. I love DIY projects. I mean, Yes. We know a lot of DIY, DIY guys that do really, really good stuff. Um, Kevin Erickson, one of my favorites. Really yeah, cool absolutely. DIY. It's probably one of the best DIY builds, I think, on the planet that I've ever seen. But kind of going back to that is like, well, for 6000 bucks, yeah, you get a Tesla motor. You guys tried that option of putting that thing in. Like you just mentioned, it didn't fit in the back of your car. and I mean, you could have made it fit. But how, what would you have to do to make that fit? I mean, how many hundreds of hours of manpower would have to go into that well and that's just the thing depending on what vehicle you're doing the the typical tesla configuration is not going to work um and in cutting a uh, classic car completely up in order to make the modern components fit in it was not something we were willing to do the rule was it was going to be a tesla and we were going to do it without cutting the car apart. Um, and so, yeah, the, the revolt motor is expensive, um, but there is a lot of time engineering and R and D that went into building the revolt motor. Um, and so, you know, we, we, I don't know that we had the capabilities um, to re-engineer and build anything equivalent to what you've already done. So, yeah, somebody could go out to a junkyard, buy a $6,000 Tesla motor. That's exactly what we did. Um, and cut it up and try to re-engineer it. Um, and that, you know, at some point your time is worth something and we realized that we were stuck and we really weren't going to make any progress on this car and that's when we started talking to you and and uh you know it was worth every penny um 
purchasing that motor. I mean, that saved us an extra year or maybe two of frustration and and failed attempts and re-engineering and and trying to to figure this out. In the end, had we had we found a way to reconfigure that motor, um, it, it would have cost us years of time and probably way more money than we spent on a on a beautiful functional um ready to drop in and drop in motor so um so yeah i i I agree with you it's uh you know lots of people you know with this with converting classic cars i mean we are so early in the adoption phase and and trying to figure these things out you know people like you have already figured out a solution um, that people need. Um, And, you know, your time isn't free. Um, And so, yeah, I mean, these motors are going to be expensive for quite some time. It's funny that you bring up the two-year mark. That's exactly how long it took me to design this thing. You know, uh, hundreds of printed parts, lots of design work, bashing my head into the ground. the pretty part was was not easy as well because that's a lot of you know sitting there, you 3D print something, you design it on CAD, and then you look at it and you're like, yeah, that didn't work, or it looks really good and it, the functionality of it's out the window. But no, I I appreciate right. you g- getting into this with me because as I said, you know that's the kind of the, a lot of the common theme I, I see online is, hey, you know these guys are charging so much money, and, or they compare it with an LS. Well, you know we could go to a junkyard and go buy an LS and build it ourselves too. That's something that sure is, you can. yeah, so you can, you that's can fine. You do exactly what millions of other people have done. Yeah. That's, that's boring. Or, or you could call turnkey and get yourself a badass LS motor and shove it in your car and pay them for a turnkey LS. And that's what we're trying to do here. But no, I appreciate, I appreciate you taking call, Patrick. I'm, I'm glad you guys are, are doing well out there. Uh, how's the car? The car is doing great. We got our new fuses put in. Um, we're getting scheduled out for every car show we're going to be at starting in a, in a couple of weeks here. So awesome. we're, we're super excited and man, that thing rips. Did you guys get into the throttle yet a little bit? We have, <laughs> and we're, we're, uh, we're still making sure everything is safe and kind of going through some testing and then taking it back to the shop and, and getting everything tight tightened up and just making sure it's as safe as it possibly can be. Well, that's that's the number one thing. And uh, once you guys put those 411 gears or 410s in there, you're going to really rip your heads off. So it'll be... Oh, yeah. Uh, well, we, we appreciate you taking the time today. And uh, keep in touch and Happy New Year, Patrick. Same to you. Thank uh, you. Take care, bud. All right. Bye. Bye. Well, there you have it. I mean, that's one of our customers. And uh, he's one of our first customers that we had. Um, they actually tried everything that we did exactly the same way. They tried to cut up a Tesla motor. Their motor is actually still in the back of my shop because when he did cut up a Tesla motor, he cut it the wrong way and it actually dipped into one of the cooling cavities that cools the motor. So once again, we've gone through this here. We've cut up a ton of these motors. We know what we're doing, I think, maybe. Um, so... Once again, Patrick said, your time is very valuable. And I know how much time I've spent into this and how much money we've put into this company. But at the end of the day, what do we like doing? We like driving our cars. So here we are, his car going together very quickly. Once we had our motor in his possession, he dropped that thing in in a matter of weeks to get the batteries up and going. That car was at SEMA this last year and it showed very well. And they're driving it, you heard it. And it was a very quick conversion for them once they had all the parts in hand and were able to drop it in. And, you know, sitting sitting there and fiddling around for the next couple of years would have cost them a tremendous amount of money. Um, Fabricators know exactly what I'm talking about. Fabbing a car is not exactly easy, especially when you're taking a car that is old and trying to completely reconfigure it for a transaxle or something that wasn't designed for that vehicle. So... Um, I hope that answers a lot of those questions out there of, hey, I want to do it myself. Hey, I support that. You want to go stick, go to the junkyard, get your own stuff, stick in the car and make it rip. I love that stuff. DIY guys, my favorite. Um, That's kind of how we pioneered this and other people pioneered this this industry is by going into these junkyards and, and experimenting and playing around. 
we do that here every single day. But if you want to drive your car and get it done and, and time is of the essence, you're going to either, you know, the Fram oil filter man said, you either pay me now or pay me later. At the end of the day, it's going to cost you just as much, if not more. Um, but hey, that's up to you guys to do and we're here if you need us.